Um, I think it's pretty evident to anybody who's followed the league for the first two weeks uh, that it remains the most competitive, um, best, toughest conference in the country. Uh, and I think that was on display in our game today. Um, feel for our young men because I thought they fought their butts off and competed uh, at a time where playing a bunch of young guys is hard to keep going when you're struggling. Um, but I was proud of their fight. Uh, I was thankful for the way they competed and gave us a chance to win. Uh, hats off to Kansas State, who made a few more plays down the stretch. Uh, I thought Arthur Luke Coloma really kind of kept them afloat for a long part of the first half. Uh, they really didn't have anybody else you know, playing particularly well. And then uh, they do what they've done the last two years with Coach Tangas. They find a way to win close games. So uh, congrats to them. And um, I look forward to getting back on my team and trying to figure out how to get better and ready for the next one. Uh, Coach, can you take us through uh, the possession where it was 68-66 case eight? Uh, with uh, 11 seconds left and resulted in a turnover? Take you through the possession? Yes. I don't remember exactly what happened. Obviously, we, I mean, I'm not sure. What's your question? Uh, I was just curious about uh, the play that was drawn up. Were you guys going for a three or a two? When we were down two? Yes. I think Javon, I mean, again, I, I don't, I, the plays all run together at this moment, you know, right, right after the loss. Um, I feel like the turnover was a turnover from the paint, but I don't, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not really sure. Coach, what is, what is one thing that makes Arthur Kaluma so tough to, to defend? Um, he, he plays with a fearlessness that really good players have to have. Um, I don't think he gets affected by missing shots. I've never coached him, but I recruited him a little bit, watched him some in high school and obviously at Creighton. Um, and I've watched a lot of their film. You know, it, it seems like he's very confident in himself no matter how things are going at any given moment. So um, when, you're, when you have that supreme confidence and you can play through those waves, that's ultimately what separates guys from being you know, good players and then ultimately being you know, best of the best all-conference type guys. And uh, certainly when they were struggling early, um, he found a way to kind of I don't know if he said it, but put him on his back and, and, and kind of, like I said, keep him afloat there in the first half. And even I thought the, the shot at the end of the first half was a big one, you know, going to half with a seven-point lead and get the ball to start. Um, him, again, in that moment, just being able to step up and knock it down was, was, was big for him. And then when you guys were, were rolling in the, that early part of the, the second half, what, was, what were the things that you liked that your team was doing and then what, what started to shift for you guys? <sighs> Well, I liked a lot of the things we did throughout the game, in all honesty. Uh, I thought this was the best we've defended in a really long time. Um, you know, we, we, we were able to kind of schematically do some things that kind of kept them off balance. Um, I think for the most part, we did a pretty good job on Tyler Perry. He, he got a couple baskets late uh, that, that hurt us. We went under a screen on him, and he made a three, and he got in the lane and got our freshman to leave the floor and get him a foul. Uh, which is what smart fifth-year guys do. They take advantage of young guys, and, and hopefully in time our guys will grow up and be able to do that to other people. But uh, I, I just like the way we competed today. Uh, we competed with a fearlessness and a courage that they, our team looked like I think they expected to win, and we came up short. Does this feel like a league? I think it's always like this, but especially this year where anybody can, can beat anybody or lose to anybody on any night. Um, as the coach of the only team who hasn't won a game, it's probably hard to really talk in those terms. But I, I have been in the league a long time. Um, and, you know, I don't follow uh, every score, but I you know, obviously pay attention to other things that are going on in the league. And, you know, I, th I think everybody in the league has at least two losses already, which is, you know, I think that's right. I'm not sure. Um, but that's not usual in, a, in many leagues. I mean, you usually have somebody that gets to 7, 8, and 0, 9, and 0, and maybe somebody's, you know, 8 and 1, or a couple teams are fighting there, and it, it does look like it's fairly balanced and competitive from top to bottom. What do you say to your team after? Competitive, and one that feels like you have it for a while, but you just can't pull out the end. Uh, you know, I'm a process guy, um, and, and a guy who understands it's a results you know, driven deal, you know. Um, no one cares how it happened. The end result is we take another L. Um, but I tell our guys how proud I am of the way they competed for each other. Um, it's very easy, especially in this day and age where everything's driven individually, for guys to start thinking about themselves and trying to figure out, you know, 
maybe what's next, who's going to get drafted, who's going to be able to, you know, lead this team and score, or whatever it is, you know, a myriad of things uh, that these guys show up today in an environment that was great. thought that crowd was phenomenal. Um, probably, you know, I, I don't know what he'll say, but they made a difference, you know, kind of kept their team's energy up when they didn't have their, you know, A game today. Um, so I tell my team how proud I am and, you know, look forward to getting the opportunity to continue to work with them. Coach, you've come up just short against K-State, Baylor, to start league play, and you guys have been pretty competitive at times. What is it that you think has prevented you guys from getting over the hump and still being the only winless team in the Big 12 so far? Um, you know, learning, winning is a process. It's a, it's a learned deal, right? Um, no one just automatically wins. Wins at winning, learning how to win, and learning how to win at the highest level, which – this is the highest level of college basketball, no question. Um, we just need to continue to figure that out, how to finish better, um, how to make the play, how to make the free throw, how to grab the rebound, how to not foul in the situation. And it's, the margin isn't enormous. Uh, again, I feel good. I mean, we, I think Baylor was ranked 13th in the country when we played them, uh, played them to a couple possessions. We played here to a couple possessions. Um, so, again, you're learning how to correct those little mistakes ultimately is what you know, makes makes a difference. Um, and, you know, obviously I think it's been duly noted. We are, the, I think, the youngest team in this league. Uh, we start today, two freshmen. We started two freshmen for the majority of the season. Um, and, you know, those guys are being asked to do a lot for a team that's full of really, really experienced guys who've been in those moments over and over and over again, don't really get rattled, don't get caught up in, you know, whether they got it going, just sticking to the plan. And so we got to make sure that our guys don't get off track uh, because naturally uh, what goes on now is people start to tell them to point at each other as to why, as opposed to, you know, a first looking inward and seeing what you can do better and then figuring out how you can be a better teammate throughout this process. Uh, and I, I believe in these kids and they'll do that as we continue to go along. Thanks, everybody. Thanks guys.